Hey guys, welcome back. So for this one, we're getting into the full story of Deadpool, Wolverine, WW3, written by Joe Kelly and illustrated by Adam Cooper. And in this one, we see a serious side of Wade Wilson that we really don't get to see that often. Where after all these years of Deadpool being known as the Merc with the Mouth, or the Regenerating Degenerate, it's come to a point where he's ready for all that to end. And Wolverine's the one person who figures this out at the last minute. So if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so for this one, we start out in Vancouver with Wolverine, who's leaping from one rooftop to the next so he can make his way to respond to a call he received from a Vancouver PD inspector he used to run with. And all we know at this point is that this inspector is calling for Wolverine because they need someone to take down a superpowered killer who's the type that likes to play with his food, so to speak, leaving his victims in a state that'll make seasoned coroners lose their lunch. So yeah, instead of reaching out to Alpha Flight, this PD called Wolverine because he needs Logan to do what he does best. But as Logan's tracking down this superpowered killer, he thinks for a moment here about his old school phone that never rings unless it's for something like this. And he even mentions here that he's still using a flip phone, which for a moment here reminded me of my favorite flip phone, which was definitely a Sanyo. I think it was the PM8200 from like 2004 or something like that. But it was a big deal at the time because it was one of the first flip phones with two color screens. But either way, the phone Logan has, it's much older than that. But while he's out here tracking down this killer, the roof that he's standing on is blown sky high. And out from the hole in his roof comes Deadpool and the superpowered killer that Logan was looking for, who goes by the name Wither. And when Logan sees them, this dude is yelling, I want my summer. So Deadpool yells right back at him, I will also yell to obtain what I do not currently have, like shoes that match my pouches. Then he tells him, but if we all got what we wanted by screaming and or murdering folks, wait, are you American? That would explain so much. And I'm just like, man, Deadpool's gonna say it how it is, ain't he? <laughs> but also right here, this is Logan finding out that Deadpool's after this guy too. So now he's more or less like, oh boy, here we go. Cause as it turns out, the family of one of this guy's victims, they put a bounty on him and that's why Deadpool's here. And Deadpool realizes that Wolverine's here, when he hears those claws, though his first guess was Wildside, which is hilarious, but also because Deadpool's a bit more familiar with this Wither guy, he knows a few of his tricks, so he tries to warn Wolverine to look out for these energy things that the dude's just lashing around, but he ends up getting tagged anyway, and I mean a few times throughout this fight, because right after this, Wolverine goes rushing in again, and Deadpool warns him, he's like, hang back, Uncanny DeVito, just before Wolverine smacked again and knocked right back over. But for a brief moment here, this gives Deadpool the opportunity to explain to Wolverine the reason why they should probably work together. Cause he tells Wolverine, think the tentacles absorb energy from covalent atomic bonds and turn them into physical strength. Cause it's either that or he's a squid that got bit by a radioactive serial killer. Though it's probably the latter. So Deadpool extends a hand like, hey, okay, so we can work together now. But Logan just tells him to piss off. And so for a moment here, the two of them go back and forth with Wolverine stabbing Deadpool so he can go after the guy. But Deadpool's like, nope, I need this bounty. So he shoots Logan in the leg and just jumps over him, which from here just makes for a real petty sequence of events. Cause next Wolverine's like, hey, I got a plan. So Deadpool's like, hit me. And it turns out the plan is to use Deadpool as cover. But following this, Wither gets a hold of Wolverine and he tells him, you're different, you're real. To where then he pulls him in closer and he says help me but following this deadpool just lands on wolverine's shoulders and he unloads on this guy while saying upgrade or perish but it hardly phases him and the killer goes on to say things that don't make a lot of sense now but they'll make more sense throughout the story but he goes on to say things like they promised me the gifts would help me connect but as he continues the dude just turns around and jumps off the building making his way towards more civilians and it's funny because Wade's like, the bounty. And Logan's like, the civilians. So then Wade's like, uh, the, the bounty of endangered civilians. Damn it. <laughs> like, man, you just told on yourself. We know what you're really concerned about, Wade. But as this guy descends towards the innocent crowd, we're shown this moment where Wolverine, he just breaks it down. Because he's like, most people never see a monster in real life. When they do, it doesn't compute. They think they're looking at a broken person who needs help. I envy them. Hunters know a monster is just a wounded animal the most dangerous kind. There's only one fix for that. 
which really is just him saying in this moment where him and Wade had to make a split second decision, the two of them were on the same page. Cause leading up to this, they had individually determined that this wasn't the kind of guy that you were just gonna reason with. Cause I mean, they knew that from his description before they got here and even more so after seeing him up close. But this last minute like-minded thinking between Wolverine and Deadpool, this'll play its part in the bigger picture because there's also a bit of a mystery to this super-powered serial killer that isn't quite over just yet. Because following this, when the EMTs arrive to pick up the body, Deadpool invites Wolverine over to his Sky b, b above the Slim Nortons for some drinks, but Wolverine just tells him to go and count his money. So Deadpool tells him, you sound pissed. We capped a serial-killing POS. We weren't going to save a guy like that. Sometimes broken is just broken. So Wolverine tells him, the same could be said about us. So Deadpool's like, me, not you, not anymore. Mutant outcast to manipulated monster to beloved X-Man. Third time's a charm, I guess. And the thing is, with Wade talking like this, it just has Logan like, okay, what are you going on about? But Wade doesn't go into any further detail. He doesn't linger on it. And following this, the two of them just go their separate ways. And later on, we catch up with Logan, who's at the bar, having a few drinks. And as he does, we see him having this conversation with the bartender, where the bartender's just like, hey, washing out the day. And Logan's like, trying, never works. So the bartender makes a reference to the definition of insanity, trying the same things, expecting new things to happen. But after hearing this, it causes Logan to pause for a moment, just before asking the bartender if there's a Slim Nortons nearby. Cause now Logan wants to go and talk to Wade about the last thing he heard him say. But when he eventually finds the place where Wade said he was staying, no one's there. And this starts to take Logan down the rabbit hole, so to speak. Cause Logan also has reason to believe that Wade knows who gave that super powered serial killer his abilities. Cause now it's not seeming like so much of a coincidence that Wade knew how that guy's powers worked, but also with Logan coming here, even though Wade's already gone, he gets extremely lucky by finding Wade's burner phone. That's not exactly burned just yet, almost as if Wade wanted Logan to find it and use it to follow him. So Logan gets forged to trace the phone's last call, which then leads him to a fancy pants hotel in Russia that was booked under the name Sonya W. Lude, which if you scramble the letters, it spells Wade Wilson. And as it turns out, this room was said to be shared with the guest by the name of Ernie Wolf, which more obviously is Wolverine. And with coming here, Logan's not exactly sure just yet what to make of it. But so far, the breadcrumbs have been so obvious that he knows he's clearly on the right track. But not long after he enters this hotel room, a bright light shines in from the window, followed by a ton of soldiers crashing in who are clearly enhanced humans. And Wolverine's able to tell because these guys carry a similar scent to the killer him and Wade put down in Vancouver. But when these dudes show up, they make it very clear that this isn't a capture mission. So in a very appropriate response, Wolverine does what he does best, which essentially is him letting his monster out as he cuts down every last one of these guys. But as soon as he's done, he's soon after greeted with a slow clap coming from a stranger who addresses Logan by his name while asking him if he's ever been to the Bolshoi. And as the stranger approaches, he tells Logan that his performance puts them to shame as he approaches with a mysterious invitation. But for Logan, what just happened here, this wasn't a performance. So he strikes this dude down and takes the invitation. But he says thanks, because I mean, hey, he's not a monster. But following this, he heads to the location on the invitation, which leads him to a place that looks like a prison on the outside. But when he walks in, there's red carpet, spotlights, big dudes with shoulder guns, like it's giving out the vibe of a MCU movie premiere prior to Avengers Endgame. And as Wolverine approaches, these filthy rich people who are here to see the show, they're just starstruck when Wolverine walks down the carpet, like they're ready to see Deadpool 3 and Hugh Jackman just arrive. But Wolverine doesn't pay them any mind. He just continues to make his way to the curtain. But when he takes a look to see what's behind the curtain, he finds that it's Deadpool though it's not the Deadpool that he remembers. So right away, Wolverine's like, Wade, what did you do? And a voice answers, saying he chose courage, the courage to be better. He allowed me to help him evolve beyond the constraints of his considerable but limiting form. And it's right here where Wolverine remembers Wade telling the killer in Vancouver, upgrade or perish. So Wolverine goes in closer to check on him, only for Wade to jump forward with a blade coming out of each arm 
and i gotta say like just with seeing deadpool like this the first thing i'm thinking is like what in the 20th century fox did they do to this man they brought back the blades from x-men origins wolverine they got him in a master chief helmet like everything about this look is giving xbox 360 vibes and i mean as far as the helmets i get it because that's the same helmet the soldiers were wearing earlier but at this point i just had to say something but either way this voice that's speaking it continues to go on saying his chosen name is wade wilson the third and i mean ww3 makes sense but he goes on to say third time's a charm were his last words before he was sedated perhaps you can explain the reference if you can spare the breath you followed him for a reason were you friends rivals either way no one truly knows what another is capable of when faced with the opportunity to transcend and at this point for logan he's trying to get way to snap out of it but after getting sliced and diced repeatedly he warns Wade that he's about to start cutting back, only for Wade Wilson III to respond by saying, I'm going to kill you. And this whole time, mind you, these rich people are just watching and clapping and enjoying the show. But right here, the voice comes back saying, Becoming number 205A begins now. Observe, friends, this is the power of change. To where next the door opens and these two are sent off to fight to the death. Alright, so coming back, we pick right up where we left off, with Wolverine finding Wade Wilson III at this strange cliffside compound, just moments before the two of them were dropped through a trap door, so they could continue this fight for the audience up above. Cause as it turns out, this group of filthy rich onlookers, they're the patrons for the secret procedure that Deadpool underwent, which as we're told is supposed to improve him, quote unquote. But none of them really care about that, they're just here to see a show, which is provided to them by way of these drones that are just hovering around Deadpool and Wolverine. And keep in mind, Wolverine, he didn't come here looking for a fight. He just followed a trail of clues that he believed Wade left intentionally, which all eventually led him here. And when he found Wade in this condition, Wade attacked, forcing Wolverine to fight back, but this whole time he's just trying to get Wade to snap out of it. Meanwhile, up above, that mysterious voice we heard from before tells his assistant, Greta, to get ready, because soon they're gonna need to change some of these parameters. But back over with Wolverine and Deadpool, Wolverine admits to himself, generally speaking, he doesn't really care too much for Wade. And to be completely frank, he admits that he hates his guts. But on top of that, Wolverine also has a soft spot for idiots whose brains get scrambled by rich maniacs for their entertainment. So that's why he's pushing forward in what he would call hero mode here. But as we know, it goes a lot deeper than that for Logan. Cause there's a reason why he followed Wade here in the first place. But we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Cause right now for Wolverine, after receiving numerous cuts and stabs, he decides to share a bit of advice with his old buddy by letting him know that he's been where he's at with a brain full of probes while not quite in his right mind. Where for Logan, the only one thing that could snap him out of that was pain. So he hops on Deadpool's shoulders, thrusting his claws through his back and through his head, which brings him to his knees. So Wolverine keeps stabbing away, only to have this combination countered with the Mortal Kombat Baraka spine burst. And it's right here where Deadpool tells him, there is something I want. You are in my way. Destroy what's in my way, and I get what I want. Simplicity. Which right here just shows us how the transformation that Deadpool's undergone has caused him to speak very logically, without the funny quips, just straight to the point. And it lends for some really good moments in this story. And we'll see more of that in a little bit. But right here, the two of them are met by Greta, who we saw earlier. Where in her case, she has the ability to use her mouth to transport either things or people from one location to another. And trust me, when she takes both of these guys in and spits them out somewhere else so they can talk to her boss, it literally took everything in me to not throw a hot to a clip on top of this moment. Cause I mean, it just would have been too easy. But also with her just spitting these guys out with no consideration of them having a safe landing, both Wolverine and Deadpool end up crashing in ways that would have killed any normal person. So for a moment here, Wolverine, he makes this observation like kind of to himself, but at the same time, he also knows that he'll recover and Deadpool will be back on his feet in like three seconds, which is precisely what happens. But also it's here where they're met by Greta's boss who's also the mysterious voice Wolverine heard when he arrived at the cliffside compound. And when he gets here, he tells Wolverine that he's the guy who performed this procedure on Deadpool. And now in this moment, Deadpool is still in recovery, so please stop stabbing him. And he tells Wolverine, before you attempt to eviscerate me, I would like to explain your predicament and your options. 
call me Delta. But right out the bat, when Logan takes a look and gets a whiff at this guy, he's like, hmm, expensive cologne, ballistic fibers, threaded with silk, sweat of a vegan. And he's like, man, if I wasn't pissed off, I'd still want to gut him. But Logan also understands Delta's holding all the cards right now. So he just plays along for the time being so he can find out more. And that starts with him asking, what did he do to Deadpool? So at first, Delta gives him the simple form of the answer by telling Logan that he gave Wade what he asked for. The opportunity to be the best version of himself. So now Wade Wilson III is able to serve a higher purpose without having the self-destructive ego to derail him. Which right there in itself is the dumbed down version of the answer. So Wolverine asks again, because he wants to know specifically what was done to Deadpool. But instead of explaining it to Wolverine, Delta more or less just tells him that he'd be too stupid to understand. And all he says is just rest assured that it was done exquisitely because he believes Wolverine should be more concerned about what's coming next. But here's the thing about underestimating Wolverine. Because as soon as Delta showed up here, Wolverine took one look and caught a whiff of this guy. He already knew his diet and he already had an idea of the way this guy was going to start talking to him. So with Delta not being clear on the details, Wolverine also picks up that this dude's wearing an earpiece and he hears the people laughing on the other end. So when Delta tries to make Wolverine an offer, Wolverine tells him you're not offering nothing. It's those people in the masks who are really calling the shots. Which on one hand has Greta like him, he read you like a book. He's got your number D. And Delta doesn't like that, so in a very condescending way. He tells Wolverine a broken clock is right twice a day and tainted experiments are not worth finishing. But those who watch want to know, is the Wolverine at his best only when he's at his worst? So Logan's like, yeah, that's the theory. So Delta tells him, one we shall test rigorously. So Delta just discards Deadpool, tossing him to Wolverine just before they're swallowed up by Greta again and transported to a North Russian tundra area, which Wolverine is not too familiar with. But he would guess that it's about a thousand miles from where they started unless she sent them east or west and at that point there's no telling but at this time wolverine he's making reservations to wire greta's jaws shut but for a moment here with the two of them trying to stay warm logan tells wade that they need to move to see if they can find a nearby village or some form of sustainable shelter and wade agrees but logan he's still not sure if wade's gonna lash out again since he's not really sounding like himself which in a strange way makes wade even more unpredictable but right here, he ends up telling Logan, no, I wanted to kill you, but I got over it. We should part ways for both our sakes, which clearly feels like a bit of a mixed signal kind of thing going on since Deadpool wanted Wolverine to follow him here. So Wade tells him that Deadpool did. I'm sorry about that. I, he was frightened, I guess. I'm not frightened anymore. I'm not him anymore. Third time's the charm. Just before Wade walks away and Wolverine's like, what's that supposed to mean? But going forward, Logan sticks with them. And as all of this is being caught on camera by the drones, the people who are watching are not at all excited about what they're seeing. So Delta tries to sell to them the idea of it being a part of Deadpool's process by telling them sometimes meaningful change requires endurance, but these guys aren't buying it. And they tell him if they're not entertained, then this is going to be the last event that they support for him. So the pressure's on for Delta. And for the next six weeks that would follow, him and the others would watch as Deadpool and Wolverine endured the harsh cold weather conditions. And throughout the course of this, it gets pretty bad for both of these guys. And I appreciate how once again, we're shown that having a healing factor for either Wolverine or Deadpool, it doesn't make it so that these guys don't feel pain, but it more so perpetuates their suffering. Cause around week three, Wolverine's like healing factors are gonna stave off problems for a while, but the cold is still cold and having a body full of metal does a number on his core temperature. While on the other hand for Deadpool, on week four, he starts coughing up blood. And so far, since they haven't seen much of any wildlife, all they've really been able to do so far is just drink melted snow. And approaching up to week six, it gets so bad, and especially for Deadpool, where Logan's not sure if he's gonna make it. And at this point, it almost sounds like the old Wade is coming back, with them making sarcastic remarks about Delta, which is usually how Deadpool would deal with pain. But on the sixth week, Wade wakes up to Wolverine cooking something over the fire, which at first has Wade believing that he's having a smell hallucination. Cause again, they haven't seen anything out here to kill. So Wolverine hands over this piece of carved meat to Wade, telling him to take it slow. Cause if he pukes it back up, he's not making another. So of course, Wade just stuffs it down. He's like, oh my God, what is this? Is this rabbit, raccoon? 
just before he looks up at Wolverine who has a huge chunk of his leg missing. And seeing this causes Wade to pause for a moment, but then he just goes back to chomping down that medium rare slice of Logan. But after seeing Wolverine commit such a selfless gesture, he feels like the least he can do is open up and tell Logan what's going on. So Wade goes on to say, you know the thoughts that keep you up at night? Why am I so screwed up? Does God hate me personally? Will I ever not feel like a walking, talking piece of crap? The old me would drown those thoughts out with various recreational poisons. But this last time, I couldn't shake it. Unfortunately, as I have a feeling you know intimately, guys like us just can't turn off our brains through the usual means. Everything just grows back. It's a special kind of hell, one I deserve, but that doesn't mean a guy doesn't get tired. One of those who watched came sniffing around, offered me 10 large just to chat. I oblige, figuring there's more gold to grab. Enter Delta, knows my story, has my records, claims he can fix me. I laugh in his face. He says that my life can't have meaning because of the bad parts of me. The worst parts are gonna live forever. My healing factor, distilled from your healing factor, blessing and a curse, kept me from dying of cancer, but it also kept me from dying of cancer. Delta didn't bother trying to mess with the healing part. Lost cause. He supercharged the cancer 10,000 times. More virulent. Voila. Mortality. The worst parts of me will die. So that maybe the better parts will get things done. I traded time for purpose. And then I screwed it up. So with hearing this, Wolverine asked Wade if Wade wanted him to stop him. But Wade doesn't answer. So Wolverine's like, Wade, I'm not your friend, I'm not your father. And Wade tells him, no, you're the one who figured this all out. Mutant Outcast suffers through the ass end of life, gets turned into a literal monster, and does unspeakable things for shady people. But even after that, you became more, a man. And it's right here where Logan understands what Wade meant earlier when he said third time's a charm. Cause Wade wanted his path to be mercenary psychopath with cancer, turned beloved ex-adjacent anti-hero, Icon, turned to an actual human being. But right in the middle of this talk, Delta and Greta show up, along with a bit of extra muscle, with Delta telling both Logan and Wade that his patrons have grown bored from watching this survival show for the past six weeks. And I mean, I guess they would prefer Naked and Afraid. Though Delta does mention they enjoyed the cannibalism. But as soon as they get here, Logan tells Delta to fix him. But as far as Delta's concerned, he did that, and Wade squandered it. So next, he gives them an ultimatum. Either Wade comes with him, offering his body to their research, or be destroyed here, since he helped destroy Delta's other quote-unquote failure in Vancouver. And for a moment here, Delta, he frames it like he would still be doing Wade a favor, even by putting him out of his misery. And he goes on to ask the question, hasn't Wade's life been nothing but misery up to this point? And right there, Logan can't even say that Wade's life hasn't been. And right after that, Delta flips it on Logan by asking him, has your life been lived better than his? Or have you just had more time to hide that the Wolverine is just a monster? Which right here, this just has Wolverine popping claws because he's had enough of Delta popping off at the mouth. But immediately after, Delta unleashes his creature, who he refers to as Snowflake. And I'm not really sure how that happened, but that's what he's been calling it. But as soon as he snaps his finger, this thing just races towards Wolverine, snatching him up and flinging him like a rag doll. And as this is happening, Delta tells Deadpool that he's going to give him one more chance. He can reset his cancer and buy him some more time. All he has to do is come with him. But this whole time as Wade is watching Logan, Delta kind of has the feeling that Wade's going to try and be a hero. So he tells Wade, don't die a meaningless death for the entertainment of these wealthy fools. Show them that you can become more. Meanwhile, on the side, Wolverine, who's just been wrecked, he's just laid out under this hulking snowflake monstrosity who's getting ready to continue to pound Logan into the ground. But as soon as Snowflake lifts its hands, Deadpool comes leaping in to rescue Logan, only to get caught by Snowflake, who just starts tearing Deadpool apart limb by limb. While in the meantime, Logan, who's still recovering, he's trying to get back to the fight as quickly as possible so he can help Wade out. But by the time Logan's able to make it to his feet, Deadpool is ripped into multiple pieces. And this is another part that just has me intrigued. Cause to start, for a moment here, the old sense of humor comes back. Cause Wade's like, eh, just a flesh wound. But also with Wade telling Logan the whole story about how this process took away his immortality, so to speak, by giving him a limited amount of time to do and be better. It now also creates the situation where, as it stands, Wade's regeneration may or may not be as good as it was six weeks ago, let alone as good as it was prior to that with Wade Wilson version two. 
aka Deadpool. So even now with Logan back on his feet, with him getting Wade's torso tossed at him with one arm still left, only followed by his head dropping on top of it, this just has Logan like, man, I guess we're putting that healing factor to the test. Only for this creature to come in and stomp what's left of Wade into a puddle of mush, which right now this has Wolverine not so sure if Wade's gonna make it back. Cause you know, with the whole thing of Wade Wilson III being mortal now and whatnot, but for the time being, it's just Wolverine by himself going up against this monstrosity with a very deceiving code name. Though I imagine Logan's biggest concern even now is if Wade will be able to pull off another miraculous recovery. And I mean, hopefully eating a healthy portion of Logan will help him out with that. All right, so coming back, we pick up with a monologue that's being given by Delta, which he's done before where he just goes on about how entropy wins and how it's human nature for one to transform their surroundings instead of becoming better themselves. And this has been a reoccurring speech from him for a while, but this time around, Wolverine's claws just cut right through it because in Wolverine's case, his life has gone against that principle because over time he's managed to become more than just a monster or a weapon. He's proven that people can change, but following Wolverine, he's then interrupted by Deadpool, who at this point is just like, hey, we're not doing this again. I just want to talk. And as he continues, Deadpool goes back to admitting how he was in a dark place when he bought what Delta was selling. But not after long, his thoughts start to go everywhere because next he starts talking about other things he could have done instead of going to Delta and giving up his immortality. And now after it's all said and done, he's a smear in the dirt. He's dead. And he goes on to say now his thinking is clear, which for Deadpool is still questionable because Deadpool's like everything's clear except for how Taylor Swift dating a football man is an Illuminati psyop because that's still bugging him. Then he's like, I don't think Namor likes music. And after that, he starts talking about the meaning of life only to then be distracted by a squirrel of corn. And Deadpool's just like, huh? He's got nuts in his mouth. But right after that, things start to come back to making sense because next Deadpool tells Wolverine that he needs to duck after the title card, of course, which we promptly see on the next page. But right after this, when we get back to the story, we see why he was telling Wolverine to duck. Cause in this moment, Wolverine's still fighting this hulking creature, Snowflake, just after it smashed Deadpool into a dead pool of blood. And after that, he just smacks Wolverine into a tree. Nah, I guess he should have ducked. But following this, Delta starts to speak to Wolverine through this creature's shoulder and telling him how Wade died because he tried to emulate Wolverine's path of trying to do better and be better without Delta's methods. And Delta tries to twist this whole thing by telling Wolverine that in Wade's case, that was only a recipe for failure because the Wolverine has conquered nothing. He's still a monster, an animal who finds temporary respite beneath the man's skin. So Delta tells him, if you don't think this is true, let me show you. As he gets this creature to grab Wolverine's arm and tear the meat straight off of the adamantium bone. And mind you, this whole time, the thoughts that are going through Wolverine's head, it's like he knows Delta's patrons are watching. So now he can't help but to think they're watching, they're laughing, and Wade is dead. Because prior to getting crushed, Wade gave up his immortality as part of his deal with Delta. So for a moment here next, Wolverine is like, man, everything hurts. And even though he hears a voice in his head saying, don't do it. Now Wolverine's just thinking hurt, hurt all. And then he starts growling like DMX used to before coming out on stage because it's here where he lets the Berserker rage take over as he starts to just tear into this thing. And as he does, Delta starts to give this monologue where he's pretty much telling Wolverine, I told you so. Because prior to this, he kept saying an animal or a monster. That's all he is and that's all he'll ever be. This is who you are, Wolverine. And of course, this whole time, Logan, he hasn't said a word while the voice in his head has been telling him, please stop. I know it hurts, but get it together. Listen to me, Logan. But he doesn't respond to the voice in his head. Wolverine just keeps going, clawing away at this creature, who at this point is just begging Wolverine to stop. So Delta tells his assistant Greta to transfer Wolverine away from there on his mark. And when Delta gives the word Greta, she does the mouth thing where she's able to swallow somebody up and spit them out in another location, which from here now has Wolverine seeing everything white because of his white hot rage. So it's here where this voice in his head, which turns out to be the voice of Deadpool, it tells Wolverine to stop as Deadpool starts to grow out of Wolverine's back. And as Deadpool's trying to physically hold Wolverine, 
and stop him from continuing in this blind rage. This quickly turns into a, a really weird fight between the two. Because on one hand, you got Deadpool who's trying to get Wolverine to cool down. And he understands Logan's blinded by his white hot rage. So Wade reaches deep down inside of them and he pulls out Wolverine's rib and stabs him in the head with it. And as it turns out, it's just enough to cool down Logan just in time before his berserker rage claims innocent lives. And for a moment, it freaks him out because he's like, man, I almost killed these people. So Wade gives him some comforting words because he tells Logan almost is for horseshoes and hot cousins, <laughs> which is wild. But even still, this has Logan feeling like, man, everything Delta said was true because now Logan feels like maybe he is nothing but a monster. Meanwhile, back over with Delta and his patrons, the group called Those Who Watch, it's here where as they're looking at the drone feed, a number of them start making their assumptions about how Deadpool's even growing out of Wolverine right now. And it ends up coming down to the idea of Deadpool being able to completely regenerate from his blood, which isn't the new thing. But what makes it tricky here is the idea that this wasn't still supposed to be possible. So as they continue to guess about what it may have been, they realized that Deadpool's blood made its way into Wolverine's body, and it was there where Wolverine's berserker rage accelerated Deadpool's regeneration, which makes sense because Deadpool's regeneration came from Wolverine in the first place. But now with this group, those who watch, with them being impressed, they start making offers for 100 million, 500 million, even a billion, because they see this as Delta's best work. They see this as a success, but Delta, he doesn't see it that way. Because for one, his precious snowflake was defeated, and for number two, with Wade Wilson coming back from the dead, this wouldn't have been possible had his science been successful. So he orders for an elimination squad to make their way to the target immediately, while also saying that the experiment was a failure. So as you can imagine, when his patrons hear this, they're not exactly pleased. Meanwhile, back over with Wade and Logan, Wade is the first to see the cavalry incoming. So he quickly tells Wolverine to pull himself together because Wade didn't come back from the dead just to make a round trip this early. But for a second, Wolverine, he's still trying to come to grips with what's happening here. So he asked Wade, are you really growing out of my back or am I losing my mind? So Wade tells him this is very real. And if Logan's ever wondered what it's like to share a poop shoot, you're welcome. And Deadpool goes on to let Logan know, for the record, you're junk feels like my junk. So as the two of them get ready to face this elimination squad, Wolverine pops claws and Deadpool holds that adamantium rib tight because that's all he has to fight with at first. But it doesn't take long for him to grab hold of one of these guys' guns and take more of these guys out. But while this is happening, we also find out that the two of them are able to communicate without even speaking. Since the two of them are sharing a nervous system, this gives them a new form of communication, which Deadpool calls telepathy. So as you can imagine, Wolverine is just loving this new surprise. But once again, like we saw earlier, the spike in adrenaline for Wolverine, it accelerates Deadpool's regeneration. So as they continue to fight back to back, more of Deadpool's body begins to develop throughout this process. And after they finish all of these guys off, we get this moment where the two of them are looking as monstrous as they can look. But it gives us this moment where Wade tells Logan, no one decides we're monsters but us. And it's something that Wolverine just really needed to hear in this moment. And even though he doesn't outright say that he needs it, you can tell. So following this, Wade suggests that they make their way to a bar so Logan can down some vodka as Wade finishes growing his body back. So Logan's like, make mine a bleach on the rocks because I'm going to smell you on me for weeks. So Wade corrects him. He tells him, in you. I have been in you. Just want that on the record. And man, let me tell you, I can't wait till later on down the line when Wade brings this up in the most inappropriate setting. But right here as we head back over to Delta, at this point, his patrons have completely turned on him. So he quickly gets his assistant Greta to use her power and chomp them out of here and take the three of them, Snowflake included, to somewhere much more quiet. And when they get here, Greta asks Delta if they or he's going to let this go. But he just tells her change comes to all things. As he opens a door and enters a room full of people wearing his masks, he tells Greta that they're moving on to the next phase. And following this, a week later, we go back to the cliffside compound in Russia, which has now been blown sky high, where we see a fully restored Deadpool walking away from this explosion alongside of Wolverine, who Deadpool refers to as his short king, because who doesn't love comic book accurate height Wolverine? <laughs> But as they leave, they're confronted by what looks to be the last of the elimination squad for this area. And it's a very rude interruption because in the middle of their conversation, Deadpool gets his ear shot off. 
because Deadpool was just asking Wolverine if the next time they bump into each other, if that'll be something a little more friendly. So Wolverine just looks over at him and he's like, hey, you know what they say. But before he gets to finish, we're hit with a parody advertisement that's like a 80s commercial for pie pool snacks. And it's disturbingly hilarious because it has Captain America jumping through this window and stopping a couple of bank robbers by tossing them a bunch of pie pool snacks and they're all sentient. And one of them's even yelling like, oh man, I knew the multiverse was filled with everything, but I didn't think there'd be one where I was a living fruit pie from the 80s. And the bank robbers were just tearing these things up. One of them's just like, the way my talking fruit pie begged for its life will haunt me forever. I can hear it still. And these guys just end up turning themselves in because the other one's like, I've done something today that I can never take back. <laughs> and it's like, they're so disturbed that both of them are like, man, just take me to jail. But after this parody ad, we go back to Wolverine and Deadpool to find out that Wolverine was about to say, fourth time is a charm, which now just has me thinking about where this might go for Deadpool in the future with his newfound perspective on life. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.